If there was one thing I learned while being a prisoner of war in the last galactic conflict, is don't bother trying to subdue a human's will. Ever. A combination of willpower, stubbornness and spite will cause them to go out of their way to annoy you. I shared a cell with a human. They were a solidly built yet still lanky being with red hair the same colour as Soul Force deserts. Maybe they came from there, I don't know. They were thrown into my cell one day and immediately stood up and went to the guards again only to get a shot bat onto the gut. The first few hours of their stay they spent pacing and muttering in an agitated tone, though I couldn't understand a word they said. The days rolled by with the routine never ending. Wake, eat, exercise, eat again, go back to ourselves, wait until nightfall to sleep. The monotony evidently began to grate on the human, and they began to sing during our downtime. They were quite talented for an untrained singer, though I never understood a word of the songs. Each time they got told to be silent by the guards, they sing louder, getting in their faces while doing so until the guards inevitably beat them for it. Eventually, after a week of beating the human, they simply gagged them, throwing them back in our cell one evening while laughing at them to try singing again. They started humming instead. This time, the guards broke their jaw, probably thinking they were making the sound with their mouth, but it didn't stop them from humming. They then covered the human's face with a mask that prevents sound from escaping. It was meant to be used when torturing so the screams didn't damage the torturer's hearing, so the sound of their humming had clearly gotten on the nerves of someone in power. After that, a rumour spread through the block like wildfire. The guards had been told they weren't allowed to beat the human anymore. They'd already received more beating than the rest of the prisoners combined, and they'd only been here about a week and a half. Plus, the warden was worried that if any news of their treatment of the human was leaked, the human federation would make this prison a higher priority. There have been many reports of prisons housing humans being targeted, and while we were far away from the front lines here, they were clearly worried. The human singing and humming had been loud enough to be heard clearly when the cells were quiet, and a lot of other prisoners took comfort in this small act of rebellion. Others had also been gagged due to sing, but it seemed no one but the single human we had could properly hum. To have them silenced completely in this manner meant we would be deprived of such things. Their songs had given us some form of hope, as silly as it sounds. With the mask on their face, I assumed they'd be at least somewhat placid, but I soon got a lesson in human stubbornness. A couple days later, they smuggled the cutlery from lunch back into the cells, and began whacking it against various things in the cells. The different objects produced different notes, and soon they were back making music again. The prisoners listened in joy to their strange human songs for about ten minutes, until the guards came into the cell, and tasered them almost to the point of inducing a seizure, and took away the makeshift drumsticks. Now it was war. They started drumming their hands on the same things they'd hit with the cutlery. It must have hurt after a while, but they kept at it, at least until they got their hands bound to the wrists later that same night. Didn't stop them, just meant they could only drum on one surface. Infuriated at this continued display of insolence, they bound their hands and arms so they couldn't move them from their abdomen. It didn't work either as they just lifted up their shirt and drummed on their bare skin instead. The warden knew this human's melodies were a rallying point for the cell block, and given it housed many captured combatants, it couldn't be allowed to continue to occur. So the human had their hands bound behind their back instead. If anything, it only made the human more annoyed. The human found a way to position themselves so they could drum on the bars of the cell, even with their hands tied behind their back. The spiteful grin they displayed when they worked that one out was positively mischievous. Sadly, it lasted all of about an hour before the guards stumbled back to the human again and bound them with their hands holding their wrists. The device they were bound with was used to restrain dangerous prisoners during transport and effectively encased the human's arms all the way up to their elbows. No more drumming for them, no more songs for us. At least that's what we thought. The human rose the next day and put their head against the bars in defeat, staring through the glass ceiling at the sky above. I watched their expression move from anger to fear, to dismay, then strangely to confusion, then excitement. Then that same mischievous smile I'd seen on their face before. They kicked their boots off and started stomping their feet on the ground, slowly at first, but the melody picked up speed. The other prisoners soon perked up that their bard was playing, but they weren't the only ones. The guards had collectively had enough. They marched on our cell and stood outside in full riot gear, ready to beat this human to a pulp no matter what the warden said. 
But before they could even get the gate open, so many things happened at once that I can only list them and hope you can picture the scene. Firstly, the three guards standing at the door had their heads split open, dropping to the ground. This caused the remaining guards to reflexively step back as a single unit until a gravity net was dropped on them that dragged them down to the floor one by one as their strength failed them. As the net forced them to the ground, the space they occupied was suddenly filled with around 20 beans in full black clad armour, the ropes hanging from the sky to above the only hint to where they came from. As the cell doors up and down the block were opened, and the black clad figures dispersed to deal with the other prisoners, one of them moved into our cell and began removing their helmet. They were a human as well, and had the same rust red hair that our human did. They both seemed to recognise the other, so I think they were related. Our human's restraints were quickly removed, and they embraced their rescuer, laughing and joking. They were the happiest I'd seen them the entire time I'd known them. I wonder what became of them. After they took the prison, they shipped us all back to our home planets, except for the human. Last I saw of them, they were dressed in the same black armour as the others, evidently choosing to return to the ongoing war. Even now, decades after that prison fell, I still find myself singing those songs, strumming those beats. My children find it strange that I became a massive fan of human music, especially the songs that humans sang. But it reminds me of hope. The hope I felt when that human sang those songs. The hope they gave to all of us, trapped in there, light years away from our homes and families. One human's willpower, stubbornness and spite, kept an entire cell block sane for two weeks until his people came to free us all. His songs allowed us to hope again, allowed us to remember a time outside of a place that some of us had been in for years. I owe that human the life I have now, and I will ensure my family remembers those songs and this story, so that they too can spread the hope that human gave to us.